Hello subscribers, lurkers, trolls, and those who wandered onto this video and have no idea what you're about to witness. Salty John here bringing you another video battle report courtesy of TFG Radio. Today we continue our look at Pink Horrors and the Wrath of Magnus release with a match between Adam from TFG Radio and his CSM warband list and myself piloting the new Magnus and Pink Horrors. This is my first game with the list and as such I have no idea what's going on so bear with us. As evidence of this, uh, more for the more OCD of you, you will notice that my list is actually short on points. I did the math wrong somewhere, which is what happens when I can't use Army Builder or my Google Sheet that sometimes I use. Oh well. We're playing ITC missions with ITC FAQ and official GW FAQ in effect. Where applicable, GW FAQ will trump ITC. Onto the lists. I decided to go with a formation and a CAD as Magnus is very cost prohibitive. I went with the Rahadi War Sect with Magnus and three level 3 sorcerers on discs, a Demon's Cad with two level 3 heralds on discs, and two 10 man pink horror squads. I'm basically looking to summon more pinks and get Cursed Earth to protect Magnus and the sorcerers while they zoom around killing stuff with their uh, mind bullets. We think it is important to actually try these things out rather than theory hammer it to death on the internet. Adam's CSM Warband is tried and true at this point with minor tweaks here and there from game to game, event to event. Black Crusade Detachment, Lord on Bike with Mark of Corn, Melt the Bomb, Sigil, and Axe of Blind Fury. Chosen with four Melt the Guns and a Dreadclaw. Three five man CSM squads with Flamers, two in Dreadclaws, one in a Rhino. Five CSM Bikers. Havocs with four Auto Cannons. A Heldrake Terror Pack with two Heldrakes with Bale Flamers. Cyclopia Cabal with three level 1 Sorcerers on Bikes. Adam's list is a solid chaos take on the tried and true Demi Battle Company builds of the Loyalist chapters. It combines some good units with objectives secured and the ability to really rack up a lot of great boon chart results for the Lord quickly, taking a middling 160 point character from meh to god status in a turn or two. We rolled up ITC Mission 3, which is kill points with Vanguard Strike Deployment. I chose to deploy first and go first. Adam then null deployed and elected not to seize the initiative, of course. At least I'll have the opportunity to get my psychic powers up and move forward for some board control. Alright, so this is the setup for the first turn. Adam has wisely chosen to go second and make me go first with Magnus over there sitting there. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of proxies in this game like I just uh, covered. So, and we're just really trying out Magnus and some uh, crazy lists. So this is going to be turn uh, one at the end of here. And we rolled up uh, the kill points ITC mission three. Alright, so here we are at the end of uh, Salty John's turn one. We're moving a bunch of stuff up. We've got a squad of summoned pink horrors right next to Magnus there on an objective. And the other objective back there is camped by the unkillable pink horrors that are going to spawn more guys. And uh, I cast a bunch of psychic powers, didn't do too much else. Threw the book, failed to throw the book. So, uh, but then I got cursed earth, so I negated it. And I chose for mine one and two. And if everything goes fine, I will have both one and two, but we'll see. Uh, on to Adam's turn one. So this is the end of Adam's turn one. He had two of his uh, chaos drop pod thingies come in. The, the total BS. Doesn't have to get out of him. One dread clause in the back corner there, getting him a five, which is to have a unit in my deployment zone. His other one's back there contesting the objective two. Well, holding two because I'm, I'm offset. Oh, it's holding two because you're offset. I'm sorry. And you're not. Oh, you're offset. No, I am offset. So it's, it's a contesting cad. Yours. Just contesting. Uh, and so that's that. So, like I said, this is where we currently stand. Adam's got a two and a five, and I'm going to get number one, but I'm not going to get number two. Correct. All right, moving on to my turn two. All right, this is the end of uh, Salty John's turn two, and I summoned some stuff, and I tried to blow up the Dread Claws as best as I could with these uh, Lance things that the Exalted Sorcerers have. Magnus tried. The both Ds, though, were out of range. <laughs> So Magnus's uh, D's not big enough. Both, both the Magnus's D's were not long enough to uh, reach the target. The warp's feeling a bit flaccid. It is. It is. I need some of that, uh, some of that Slaneshi Viagra. So he missed. I'm still on objective one in the center. Uh, two's back there, but he's still contesting. I rolled up really bad objectives for me this turn. So I rolled a three, which is hold of his objective back here and then have a unit on his deployment edge that I'll probably have. So uh, as it stands now, we've got, uh, I've got three and five is mine. Adam is going to score five. So it'll be tied at one and one. Oh boy. 
Here we are at the end of Adam's turn two. <coughs> he had a lot of stuff come on, including his bikers. His biker unit came on over there. And uh, his threatening Magnus, who's still flying. Magnus got vector struck. No, yeah, vector struck by Heldrake. And he took a wound. And I lost a couple of pink horrors and made blue horrors in the center. I lost a bunch of pink horrors behind that building right there, and you'll see it in pictures. And I got 10 blue horrors. You have 12 total right now. Now I have 12 total. And a, a rhino came on back there and took out a couple of pink horrors. And again, I got to make a bunch of blue horrors. It's a lot of fun. And that's it for that. Uh, like I mentioned before, we are playing with the new FAQ from GW. And the score currently stands the end of Adam's turn two. Adam has one KP, I have none. And we both have one Maelstrom. And I'm about to score one. And that's it. As Adam's units start to come on the board, we really start to find that Magnus is very dependent upon the psychic phase to do anything of note at all. The list also starts off with a very small model count, which is going to be hampering in the very early stages of the game. Here we are at the end of uh, John's turn three. <clears throat> I rolled a one and a five. Uh, I'll probably end up scoring at least one of those. We'll see. It depends on what happens. Um, in this turn, I charge my blue horrors in on the bikes, which are on the other side of that building. Which again is in other shots, so you'll see that in other shots. Uh, Magnus flew over there. He shot out a whole bunch of stuff. He killed one Hell Drake. And he killed one Hell Drake. Could not be bothered to do anything to a rhino. <laughs> Hell Drake dies right over He killed there. one biker with a D shot. <laughs> so, the Hell Drake also died to a D. True. Out of so, six. The non beam D, yeah, rolling a uh, six. So, there's still a rhino over there. Uh, contesting an objective which neither Magnus nor the sorcerer on the disc there could get to kill with like bolts, doom bolts. So, so far my second phase is not doing that great. I keep rolling pretty badly when it comes to like armor penetration and stuff like that. It's the armor pen that's right. Yeah, the armor pen is killing me. Um, I did charge the blue horrors in on the bikes and that was not very effective. They got instability out, which is good. I enjoy the fact that that is not going to be some uber unstoppable thing. So, so as is now, the score is... I have two kill points. Adam has uh, two kill points. And I have two maelstroms, and Adam will have two maelstroms because he went ahead and scored it for his uh, next turn. There's a couple of things that are really beginning to stand out about Magnus and Magnus-based lists. Um, not just on this battle report, but ones you'll see other, uh, uh, elsewhere on the internet and uh, reviews you'll see elsewhere on the internet. It's very dependent on rolling well. When you have one unit or two units that's doing so much of the work for the rest of the army, you really become dependent on rolling well. And in a game like this one where I'm not rolling that well, you really start to feel it very quickly. Also, taking down armor is going to be really hard for a list like this. Here we are at the end of Adam's turn three, <clears throat> and we had a bunch of stuff go on, so he did some assaults and some shooting. He cleared out a bunch of pink horrors and blue horrors. He went from two KPs to six in this turn. So, okay. Uh, right here, he's holding three, which is one of the ones he rolled. <coughs> so that's gonna, he's gonna score that one for sure next turn. I doubt I can get over to it. And then over here, his biker unit's cleared out pinks and blues, and one of the sorcerers, that's that. So the current score standing is, yeah. It's currently at uh, six KPs for Adam to two for me. We went ahead and scored my next Maelstrom, if, uh, so I'll have three, but Adam's most uh, likely gonna score both of his. So uh, we'll see how, if I can, if I can get rid of one of those or not. Luckily, uh, the pink horrors are turning out to not be as big of a deal as a lot of people were thinking. Yes, they blow up in other units. Yes, there's going to be a lot of them going around the board. However, even without a Loki like I don't have in this list, there's not an insurmountable number of them. And the blue horrors, the brimstone horrors, really do suck in close combat, so you can deal with them effectively. So far, the most difficult part about playing this list is really taking down the enemy's armor or high-value targets that are resilient. Right, here we are at the end of uh, John's turn four. 
and uh, Magnus came down from the skies and put the beat down on a biker unit and a sorcerer. So he took out the biker unit and the sorcerer, which is kind of cool. Uh, behind the building right there is uh, the Lord, and the Lord is boosted big time for the boon table. These pinks came over here. I have yet to use the book correctly. <laughs> get it to stick. I have yet to get Cursed Earth off, except for the first turn where it didn't matter. So Magnus will be sitting on a four plus with the rerolling ones. A one or two, minus one. Uh, that's right. So he's gonna be at a five plus because of minus one of all the nonsense. It's a stupid, stupid rule. Who the hell plays his armies with all these psychic powers? Uh, over here we've got a rhino that I assaulted in the rear and put two whole points off of, and that's about it. So uh, for my maelstroms, I rolled up again. Not some great ones for me. I got uh, three and five. So I. Hopefully we'll get five, because Magnus will still live. We're, we're thinking Magnus might be able to beat his lord in combat, hopefully. Um, I'm not getting three. And right now I'm at four KPs to Adam's six. So that's how that hands. We'll see what happens in Adam's turn. Not having Cursed Earth up on Magnus and failing to use the book in the correct way or actually having it go off is really going to hurt uh, going forward in this match. This is the end of Adam's turn four, and we finally decided it would be a good idea to just change the camera angles, since everything's happening on this side of the table anyways. Uh, this is a pretty good turn. Uh, Adam did not kill off the Brimstone Horrors right here. There's one left, so it's good for me. He did not put a wound on my Sorcerer, which is again good for me. However, <clears throat> during this turn, Adam took four wounds off of Magnus. A Victor Strike, Auto cannons and bolters because of the whole and the heat blast, the heat blast from uh, one of his uh, dread claws because I failed to throw the book and so got a negative and then failed to curse earth so I didn't get a bonus to my invul save so I was failing a bunch of fours and fives all over the place. He charged him with his uber lord who's booned to crazy and back. Uh, I did one wound to his lord with Magnus and he failed to do two wounds to me because I uh, passed two five up invul saves which was good for me. So that's going to continue, and we're going to see if Magnus can finish that guy off in close combat or not. As it currently stands, uh, Adam will have... He has four Maelstroms, I have four Maelstroms. Uh, that is including what I would score right now as my turn starts. Not counting his score yet. I have uh, four KPs, Adam has six. A list like Adam's is a veritable toolbox in the 40k world. Uh, he's got the tools to take on just about anything that's going to get thrown at him, whether it be flyers, death stars, uber lists, or whatever. Uh, Unfortunately, the Magnus list has those tools, but they're all in the psychic phase, and it's very dependent on rolling well during the psychic phase. Magnus succeeding on a 2 plus is great, but he only has access to the two charts. All right, here we are at the end of uh, John's turn five. Uh, we basically understand that the game's going to be over at this point due to time, so uh, we're going to play out the Adam's turn five. But we're not going to roll for a random game like to say it over. So uh, down here, we cleared out some Marines and a Rhino, <laughs> pretty handily. And uh, then over here, Magnus and the Chaos Lord are in a slap fest. Yep. Neither guy wounds, neither guy does anything. Here is the current standings. We've got Adams ahead on Maelstroms because he just scored for his turn. I'm behind. Uh, he is ahead on KPs by one. So here we are at the end of the game. Uh, ends on five due to time. And uh, Adam's going to win it. He's got both KPs and Maelstroms. And he, even if I had a couple extra turns, I might be able to get some more KPs. Uh, but Adam also got uh, first strike. And, and, no, and then you got and then King I have of the Hill. King of the Hill. Um, and then one got Slay the Warlord. If it went on a couple more turns, probably Magnus kills the Chaos Lord, but it's taking a while. So the Chaos Lord is down to one wound, Magnus is down to two. So even in the, in the ensuing phase, it's probably going to happen. Uh, Adam's Chaos Lord is pretty crazy right now. And by pretty crazy, it's not an uh, understatement. He's currently got all these boons on the boon chart, including things like Shred, uh, Increased Strength, Eternal Warrior, 
all this crazy stuff. Plus two initiative. Plus to the, plus two initiative was a big one because it meant that he was swinging the same time as Magnus. Um, so that's pretty good for 160 points. Over the course of a game, you get to become one of the greatest champions in the galaxy. So that's pretty good. Uh, it's a fun game overall. I like Magnus. He's really good in the psychic phase if you can uh, get to a point where you're using him a lot. I only got really one good turn of shooting with him. And Pink Horrors blowing up is not as big of a deal now. Uh, I like that it's got fixed. There's no daisy chain. I like the GW fixed to it. Um, other than that, I don't know. Magnus is good, but he's a lot of points. And you can't take much else with him when you take him. So that's that. Uh, stay tuned again for more battle reports coming in the future. Hope you enjoyed this presentation of TFG Radio Battle Reports by Salty John. Uh, if, as always, if you have any comments, or criticisms, or whatever, let us know. We really like to know how you would like us to improve these videos. After all, we're doing them for you, not so much for our own benefits. See you later.